On-farm milk culturing will teach you how to test for and identify mastitis-causing bacteria. When running a dairy farm, keeping animals healthy and producing healthy milk is the most important challenge, for dairy farms are naturally unsanitary places, with many cows eating, drinking, and eliminating within close proximity to one another over a period of years. Milk containing bacteria indicates mastitis, an inflammation in the mammary gland which is one of the most costly diseases affecting the dairy industry. Recent estimates suggest each case of mastitis can be associated with a $231 to $289 loss per cow, which translates to an over $1 billion per year loss for the U.S. dairy industry. Reduced milk production, discarded milk, vet services, culling cows, and disease treatment all contribute to these farm profit losses. Therefore, it is important to provide proper treatment to minimize the negative impact on both profit and herd health. Mastitis is associated with the most frequent antibiotic use in dairy cows. However, many times these antibiotics are either ineffective or simply not needed. Producers who overuse antibiotics can decrease their profit and also unknowingly contribute to antibiotic resistance. On-farm culturing involves testing that you perform yourself to determine which bacteria is or is not present in the milk. You'll learn what you need to prepare for the test as well as how to perform, read, and interpret the culture test. To start, you should have the following supplies ready for preparing for culturing. A refrigerator or thermal box to keep the plates cool, 4 degrees Celsius or 39.2 degrees Fahrenheit. An incubator that can reach and maintain 37 degrees Celsius, 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. A thermometer, sterile test tubes for milk samples, sterile swabs for smearing the milk on the plates, some quad auger plates, alcohol pads, milking gloves, bleach, Ziploc baggies, clean paper towels, germicidal teat dip, and a couple of Sharpie markers. Penn State has created a special auger plate culturing system for dairy producers. The four different plate quadrants will grow and detect different species of bacteria. Because different bacteria respond to different antibiotics, it's important to know which bacteria your affected cow may have. Quadrant 1 is made of McConkie's agar, MAC, which detects gram-negative bacteria such as coliforms and non-coliforms. Quadrant 2 is made of Edwards modified agar, EMCO, which detects streptococci bacteria. Quadrant 3 is Baird Parker agar, BPA which detects staphylococci bacteria. Quadrant 4 is blood agar, BA, which can grow most types of bacteria and you'll use it to confirm results from the other three quadrants. Sometimes it's called the control agar or check agar. Different types of bacteria will look different while growing, so accurate identification can help you best target which treatment your specific case requires. To begin the culture, you'll need to collect an aseptic sample of milk. Start by labeling the test tubes. Mark the test tube to keep track of which sample it contains. Use a marker to write which of the cow's quarters is being sampled. Right front, RF, right rear, RR, left front, LF, and left rear, LR, as well as the cow's identification number or name and date. You'll also need to sterilize the cow's udder before you take the samples to prevent contamination. After putting on some fresh gloves, first use a clean paper towel to remove dirt or manure from the teat. Remember, even if a cow's udder appears normal, she can still have a mastitis infection. After sterilizing the teat, vigorously squirt several streams of milk from the teat to access fresh milk. This process is known as stripping the cow. After stripping, dip each teat in a germicidal teat dip and allow the dip to stay on the teats for at least 30 seconds. 
Then dry the teats thoroughly using a clean cloth or paper towel. After dipping and drying, you should then vigorously scrub the teat, paying close attention to the teat ends, using cotton ball soaked in 70% alcohol, squeeze out any excess alcohol before using them on the cow, or alcohol pads until the cotton balls, pads, remain clean. Use as many cotton balls, pads, as you need. Take care not to touch the teat end with your fingers and don't let the teat end touch the cow's leg, another teat, or her tail.